secure are my personal data? How can I protect them? I'm looking for answers to these questions in a very secure location, the Bundesdruckerei in Berlin. It prints banknotes and makes ID cards, among other things. Its core speciality is security, and it has 400 IT specialists working on just that. In one project, for example, they're developing facial recognition software. How does the computer know who I am? The short answer is that intelligent algorithms analyze my facial features. Okay, I have a really standard kind of face that's easy to recognize. No, you have a good face the system can recognize. <laughs> okay. Many companies want to enhance their security, often by introducing biometric access controls. For example, using fingerprints to identify members of staff. Is that always a good thing? More security means that companies know more about us. In our digital age, authentication is becoming increasingly important in the Internet, that is, proving that people really are who they claim to be. There's always the risk of cyber attacks, and there are other kinds of danger out there as well. We have to ensure that identities cannot be stolen. Keeping data about individuals private is a hot-button issue in Germany. Many argue that a fingerprint is much more secure, that is, less easy to hack, than a password. People also have distinctive ways of moving. Computer programs are being developed to analyze them too, in order to check if a certain person is who he or she claims to be. That's not so easy, analyzing the way you walk, slower or faster, in high heels or trainers, it's complicated. It's definitely a fascinating topic. A single technology can never guarantee 100% security. So we combine different technologies to enhance our level of confidence. I'm here in Darmstadt. It set itself the goal of becoming the most digital city in Germany with the latest IT technology to help manage transportation, energy, schools, healthcare, and physical infrastructure, even down to lampposts with sensors that check the weather. At the Urban Institute, they're convinced that big data can be deployed to make life better in the city. It could even help drivers find a parking spot. But the CEO of the company says skepticism often thwarts progress. We're reluctant when it comes to innovation. Maybe that's typically German. We don't feel ready to strike a new path. That holds for local authorities, too. They're often unwilling to try out new things. We're not talking about personal private data, but data in the public domain that can't be used to harm anybody. We shouldn't always be focusing on the possible downside. Here, for example, Sensors in a smart trash bin only ask the collectors to come and empty it when it's full. Fewer trips would save money. Eventually, the system could predict when it will be time to come by again. So what's this? At the moment, what we're seeing on this screen is information provided by a sensor. It tells us how full a certain receptacle is. In this case, a five cubic meter waste paper container. And somebody's putting paper in it as we speak. So the sensors show us what's happening in real time. Wouldn't that be nice? I certainly wouldn't mind if the rubbish bins at my house were emptied whenever needed. Chameleons can't relate to the issue of digitalization, but they can benefit from it. Perhaps not at home in Brazil, but here in chilly Germany. At this zoo in Darmstadt, the microclimate of the chameleon enclosure is adjusted manually, for now. It would be really great to have sensors that register humidity, temperature, the condition of the water in the aquariums. Then we could enter the levels and say, between here and here, everything's okay. And then if the sensors were outside those levels, 
A warning would pop up to tell us that we should go to that enclosure or terrarium or aquarium. Something's not right there. So the plan is for the digitalization of Darmstadt to benefit the zoo as well. More investment in high tech would free up the keepers to spend more time looking after the animals. This macaque is pretty skilled at using the touch screen. It's being trained by Jessica Blackburn. Good girl, Tweed. There's one picture there. He'll press that, and then there's two, and he has to press the one that matches that's the same. They're pretty intelligent. I don't think an ape would be capable of actually using a touch screen on its own to like go on Facebook and everything, but it can recognize that when it touches the screen, things happen, and that it can use that to get something that it wants, definitely. There have been experiments with apes looking at pictures of potential partners on a screen before meeting in the flesh. Perhaps digital technology can help match make monkeys and boost their reproductive success. Who'd have thought it? Online dating may not just be for humans. I'm in Hamburg, but Google and the like probably know that already. I'm here to meet somebody who always carries his personal data with him. Patrick Kramer no longer needs a key to open the door to his home. He does it electronically with a wave of his hand. That's because it contains a small data chip implanted under the skin. Patrick Kramer is my first cyborg. There are said to be about 2,000 in Germany already. He was so fascinated by the technology that he gave up his day job to set up a company that sells a variety of implants. Imagine a world where there are no more personal computers or laptops or smartphones because miniaturization means we can carry all the technology with us under our skin. There's even a term for that, shy tech, technology that's so tiny we don't even see it anymore. I can imagine that nanotechnology will lead to nanobots. You could inject a tiny implant into the bloodstream. It logs into the brain and does something there, say, boosts its power a thousandfold. Imagine 30, 40, 50 more years of these developments. Then we'll no longer be talking about a glass capsule inserted under the skin, but something entirely different, technology based on my DNA that gives me new powers. Eventually, we'll no longer be able to say if it's biology or technology. Now that is something to chew on. Digital technology logged into my DNA. It sounds like sci-fi, but some say it could become reality. Are we humans being absorbed into machines? Or are we incorporating technology into ourselves? It remains to be seen. Stay tuned.